In this video I'm going to be focusing on the area under a curve using left and right endpoints. We're just going to refer to them as left endpoints or right endpoints and kind of playing around with this idea and seeing how we can estimate that area under a curve. All right, generally um, this makes for a really nice prelude to um, getting into that Riemann sum and the definite integrals. So it would be something that you would take a look at before um, you actually start talking about Riemann sums or definite integrals. Okay, just playing around with what's this look like, how is it going to estimate the area under the curve, and what kind of estimates are you going to get, as in underestimates, overestimates, that sort of thing. All right, so I'm only going to work out um, on one specific function in one given interval. Um, we'll do a left endpoint first, then we'll do a right endpoint, and then we'll kind of look at those estimates here. All right, so in I've uh, Got my set of directions here. It says on this one, use the left endpoint and the given number of equal rectangles to approximate the area of the region between the curve and the x axis over the given interval. All right, so these four rectangles in this example, I am specifying that we want equal rectangles, so we're dividing this into equal endpoints or equal um, intervals. I'm going to use a left endpoint and I'm going to estimate this area. Okay. Now, if we, before you get going, if you just kind of want to stop and think about this a little bit, kind of what's going to be happening in this picture. All right, this function is a straight line. Okay, so I could do a really rough sketch here. Okay, so I've got a, a slope of three and a y-intercept of two, so we could just roughly guess. Okay, let's say it looks like that. All right, now I'm running on the interval from zero to two. Well, so here's zero. All right, let's just say two's right about there. Okay, so let's go up to there. All right, so I am, by doing this, if I'm going to use the left end point, I'm going to divide this into four equal rectangles, and I'm going to be approximating this area under this curve. Okay, now let's kind of take a look at what that would look like. If I had four equal intervals, I don't know, let's rough estimate here. Let's try to make that look like, okay, so we'll say that that's four equal intervals. All right, now a left endpoint. So a left endpoint here, um, let's even switch to a different color here. All right, so when I come up on that left endpoint of zero, I would hit right there. So there's my rectangle that would um, be my first rectangle. All right, now on this interval, I would come up, I would hit the curve, and I would make a rectangle. There's going to be that second rectangle, the third equal rectangle. Right, I'm going to come up. Here's my left endpoint of it. I'm going to go up. I'm going to hit my curve. I'm going to come over down to there. We're going to assume these are all equal rectangles. And then my fourth one, here would be my fourth one. I would come up, hit the curve right here. All right, and then hopefully you can tell that if I calculated the area of this rectangle plus this rectangle plus this rectangle plus that rectangle, that it's going to give me an underestimate. All right, so these left endpoints, because I've got a linear equation here with a positive slope, all right, is going to give me an underestimate of that area under the, that curve. All right, so that's what we've got going on in this picture. All right, now the, the thing is we've got to figure out what these endpoints are. All right, there is, since I know they're equal endpoints, all right, then I can use a formula that's going to help me calculate those really simply here. Okay, the formula is going to be, um, let's even put it in a different color as well. All right, let's say delta x. All right, delta x being the distance or width of that rectangle. Delta x is equal to b minus a all over n. All right, well, on your endpoints, this is the interval from a to b. All right, and then n is the number of rectangles that you are dividing that section up into. All right, so if we do a little bit of math here, we're going to have 2 minus 0 all over 4, which means that's a 1 half width for each rectangle. All right, so I don't need to necessarily draw this picture every time I do it. All right, I could shorten this out just a little bit here. I know that I start at zero. If I have a width of one half, then my first hash mark is going to be at one half. My next one would be at one. My next one would be at three halves. And then my last one there would be at two. All right, so those are the intervals right there. So you don't need to draw this entire picture. You get the idea. You know it's an underestimate. All right, you just need these values of these left 
endpoints. All right, understanding that here would be your first rectangle with a left endpoint of zero. Your second rectangle would be here with a left endpoint of one half. Your third rectangle would be here with a left endpoint of one. And your last rectangle would be here with a left endpoint of three halves. All right, so then if I wanted to actually um, do my little rough estimate here, I could do, and, and so with it being equal widths, you could factor um, that out, the one half out, or you could just do length times width, length times width, length times width, and add them all up. All right, so um, let's do that first, and then I'll factor it out second. So I want the width of this rectangle, the first one, which is one half, times the height of that rectangle. Well, the height of that rectangle, I'm going to take zero, plug it into my function, and that'll tell me how high that is. So f of zero plus a one-half for my next rectangle times f of, well, plugging in that one-half into the function will tell me how high it's going to go. So plugging in a one-half plus a one-half times, all right, on that third rectangle, plugging in the left endpoint of the third rectangle is a one. So f of one, and then plus a one half times, on my last rectangle, one half for the width, times how high that's gonna be, plugging in that left endpoint, f of three halves. All right, and I really do set this up um, like this initially because if you are in calculus as a high school student and you're going to be taking that AP exam, all right, they're not always going to have equal widths on these rectangles. Okay, they will not always have. So the first width might be a, a one half, the next width might be a three, the next one might be a two, the next one might be a one. All right, so there's nothing that says that the width of each one of the rectangles have to be equal. Just in this particular example, I set it up to be equal. All right, so in which case, if you wanted to do the math a little bit simpler, I could factor out the one half out of each one of those. All right, and then I would just do, be doing f of zero plus f of one half plus f of one plus f of three halves. Okay, you, if you've got a graphing calculator, you could set this up in your table of values. You can calculate these out really quick, or most of them is going to be pretty simple here as well. So if I plug in zero, I'm going to get a two. If I plug in a half, I'm going to get 3.5. If I plug in one, I'm going to get five. If I plug in three halves, I'm going to get 6.5. All right, I did that pretty fast there, so if you need to pause the video, plug that in, and make sure that you can calculate and get those values out, that would be good. Add them all up there, and we're going to get an approximate underestimate of 8.5. All right, and since this one, in this particular example, I'm not referring to a Riemann sum, I'm not referring to a definite integral of anything of that nature, I actually am saying use it to approximate the area, all right, it, it would be an honest thing to put a label on there of units squared because in this particular problem I am just estimating the area under that curve using some equal rectangles and a left endpoint. All right, now let's work this exact same um, example out with same function, same interval, four rectangles, but then do a right endpoint so that you can see the difference here. So this underestimate is about an 8.5 units squared. Okay, now let's go back and just write down everything that I had before. This time I'm going to use write endpoints, all right, and the same function, the same interval, and four rectangles. All right, now here again, on this first one, since we're trying to just emphasize what this is going to look like, let's go ahead and, and sketch it out. All right, it's a rough little sketch here. Okay, so we know it's a linear equation going through two again. All right, so we'll just say it's up like that. So here is zero. Let's say two is about here. All right. Now this time I need four equal intervals, four equal rectangles. Okay, four equal rectangles right there. All right. Now I need right endpoints. So on this first rectangle, I'm going to go to the right endpoint and I'm going to go up to my curve and draw my rectangle. Probably should have done this in a different color, mm, but I didn't. All right. And then second rectangle, I'm going to go to the right endpoint of it and then I'm going to go up to my curve. There's my second rectangle, my third rectangle. I'm gonna, here's my third rectangle. I'm going to be on the right side of that, or the right endpoints. And then for my last one, right endpoint of that last rectangle goes all the way up to the curve. All right, and then hopefully there, you're going to see that if I calculated the area of each one of these rectangles, all right, it's going to give me an overestimate. 
an overestimate here. Okay, so now again, we could recalculate the width of each, each one of those rectangles. We might as well go ahead and do that just so we'll you know, practice with that formula. Delta x, since they are equal rectangles, I can do uh, b minus a over an n, which is going to give me a 2 minus 0 over a 4. All right, with this being A, this being B, and this being N, again, number of rectangles. All right, which gives me, again, the one-half width for each rectangle, which we knew that because that's what we had calculated on the first one, and nothing had changed. Okay, and again, so I wouldn't necessarily draw this picture every time. I would probably just do a much shorter version here. I've got a zero. If I go up by one-half, I'm at one, at one-half, then I'm at one. Then I am at three halves, and then I'm at two. All right, now this time I want the right endpoints. All right, so here's my first rectangle. I'm going to be using this number. Here's my second rectangle, this number. Third rectangle, this number. Last rectangle, this number. Okay, all right, so then let's go ahead and estimate here. I'm going to have a one half width times f of one half because I need to know how tall that first rectangle is, plus a one-half width times f of 1 for that second rectangle, plugging in 1 to see how high it goes, plus a one-half times f of 3 halves, and then for my last rectangle, a one-half width times the height of when I plug 2 into that function. All right, and again, probably to make the math a little bit easier, go ahead and factor out that one-half, then you're going to have an f of one half plus an f of one plus an f of three halves plus the f of two. Alright, you've already calculated these three from your first example, so that math ought to be a little bit easier. Plugging two in then would be my only new number. So I'm going to have a one half times f of 3.5 plus plugging in one, I get five. Plugging in three halves into my function, I'm going to get a 6.5. And then plugging two in, two times three, six plus two more is going to give me an eight. All right, which is then going to give me a rough estimate of about 11.5. And again, since it's area, we can go ahead and say units squared. All right, so keeping in mind that this is an overestimate when I use the right endpoints. All right, so uh, just uh, one example here using left endpoints and right endpoints and kind of analyzing what's happening, how you're calculating that area under the curve. This would be a really nice lesson or introduction before you got into a Riemann sum or in working with your definite integrals. So definitely thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.